Naruto and Kuruma, Itadori and Sukuna, Okarun and Turbo Granny. Symbiotic fusion between a man and a monster is easily one of my favorite tropes in shonen anime. It provides an interesting dynamic as the protagonist learns to live with a malevolent entity who's usually up to no good. Kafka from Kaiju No. 8 has joined this elite roster, although the dynamics of his symbiosis are a little different from the guys I mentioned earlier. Anyway, we're here to talk about everything we know about his kaiju transformation. What's up, anime fans and manga readers? The world of Kaiju No. 8 is a brutal and unforgiving one. The threat of monstrous beasts known as Kaiju put innocent lives at constant risk. Humans have devised various methods to combat the Kaiju threat, including the utilization of specialized combat suits and harnessing latent potential within themselves and the Kaiju bodies. Kafka Hibino, our protagonist and a member of the defense force against Kaiju, finds himself uniquely fortunate, or unfortunate, to merge with a Kaiju as it, very grotesquely I might add, forces its way down his throat. Although Kafka Hibino underwent a dramatic transformation, the specifics of how and why it happened remain largely unknown. Additionally, his upper limits and their implications are still unclear. However, it's worth examining what we do know. Kafka didn't start with kaiju powers, as shown in the earlier episodes. The fact that he is one of the first, if not the only people, to transform from a human to a kaiju is significant. I mean, think about it. How many other people can say that their throats have been invaded by a telepathic bug-like alien which granted them the ability to transform into an armored human-kaiju hybrid? Yeah, that's what I thought. This transformation makes Kafka quicker and more powerful than most of the defense force. In his kaiju form, he now has the strength, speed, and destructive capability to fight off other kaiju and protect people, fulfilling the desires he's held since he watched his hometown get destroyed as a child. He possesses the ability to manipulate parts of his body in various ways, such as manifesting tentacles, smaller heads, and additional limbs. He can also transform his tongue into a long-range capturing weapon, adding to his versatility and combat prowess. Couple this with his insane strength, immense durability, exceptional speed and reflexes, and oh, yeah, his frickin' energy blasts? The guy is a walking tank. Kafka, like all other kaiju, is formidable, but not invincible. He possesses an internal core that can maneuver within his body, making it difficult for opponents to deliver a fatal blow. However, these newfound abilities also place a massive target on his back. As a kaiju who appeared out of nowhere and has been officially numbered by the Defense Force, he faces significant challenges and dangers. Despite his generally non-threatening and even-tempered nature, the sheer destructive capability of his kaiju form is alarming. His ability to pulverize monsters into blood and guts or vaporize an entire kaiju down to the bone with a single full-powered punch is understandably a source of concern for everyone in the Force. While Kafka has gained the ability to effortlessly defeat various kaiju, from low rankers like the spider-like human-headed creatures to the more advanced species with stronger attacks, it quickly becomes clear that the immense power he wields is not meant for use against humans or even low-ranking defense force officers. When the defense force discovered his capabilities, they designated him Kaiju Number 8. This designation signifies that he is not only an exceptionally powerful kaiju, but also a potential threat, with strength rivaling only seven other kaiju encountered so far. If he were to lose control or misuse his power, he could endanger Japan and humanity as a whole. That's a pretty big deal. Now, if you have seen all 12 episodes or read the manga at all, you know we encounter more humanoid kaijus with incredibly strong abilities that make it a challenge even for high-ranking members of the Defense Force. Thankfully, Kafka was able to save some lives at the cost of revealing his identity. Kafka's transformation into a kaiju raises a crucial question. How did this happen, and why is Kafka seemingly the only human to have undergone such a change where a kaiju wants to kill other kaijus? Unfortunately, the story, in the anime at least, has not provided a definitive answer. We don't have a backstory for the kaiju that turned Kafka into one of them, a scientific explanation for this unprecedented event, or any confirmation regarding whether the other numbered kaiju share a similar origin. 
Despite this uncertainty, several theories can be proposed. The kaiju responsible for Kafka's transformation might have been artificially created, or it could be a rare variant capable of converting others into kaiju. Alternatively, it may simply require a compatible host to establish a parasitic or symbiotic relationship. Any of these theories could be true, or none at all. Given the kaiju's enigmatic origins, the true nature of the creature that transformed Kafka, for now, remains a mystery. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I'm sure the story will gradually make its way up to it and reveal all that we should know in due time. Fans can only hope the story will eventually delve deeper into the origins and details of Kafka's kaiju form and powers. For now, Kaiju Number 8 continues to unravel its secrets bit by bit. Anyway, that's all we have for today, folks. Do you agree with our analysis? Maybe there are some other cool facts about Kafka's kaiju form that I left out. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Please subscribe if you haven't already and ring the notification bell to get regular updates on new videos. I make awesome anime and manga content like this every week, so be sure to check them out. Thanks for watching, and bye for now.